OK, seems like everyone's here. So hello, everyone, and welcome to this Oasis Loop webinar. Um, my name is Norbert, and I'm one of the BDMs um, looking after the geotechnical sales within Oasis. Um, so just a few things before we start the webinar itself. Um, we have a great turnout um, engineers from all around the world. So thank you all for joining, especially those um, from Australia. Well done staying up so late. Um, regarding the webinar setup, um, you will be muted. However, we do have a Q&A session at the end um, and we will enable the chat box um, in about five, 10 minutes. So you can just put your questions over there. Um, regarding our presenters, so our presenters today are Carol Matthews, um, our Geotechnical Suite Director, and Mark Skinner, our Geo, uh, geo Product Manager. So without any further ado, um, I will hand over to Carol. Good afternoon, everyone. As, as Norbert says, thanks very much for joining. Um, I'm the, the um, leader of the Geotechnical Development Team at Oasis, and we're very pleased to give you this webinar today about the new version of Oasis Slope, which is version 21. Um, if we can move through, start moving through the slides, that would be great. Thank you. Um, so latest news on Slope 21. It was released a couple of months ago. It has quite a radical update um, to the previous versions of Slope we've released. So the, the user interface was completely redesigned um, with a different way of specifying the, the soil strata. The Morgenstern price analysis method was introduced. Um, there's an optional feature to generate pore pressures via a steady state seepage analysis using finite elements. And we have JSON file input and output, which has a lot of advantages for um, automated workflows and building slope into um, automated processes. So for this webinar, we're going to use slope 21 um, build 35, which has just been released as a, a maintenance update to the original release. Um, the notifications should have gone out to um, customers. So if anyone would doesn't have the, the link to that new build and would like it, um, just, just drop us a, a quick line and we'll update you on that. So as I said, the uh, the input for Slope has changed quite a lot. So it's useful just to revisit things like the help manual. Um, there was an earlier webinar which introduced the, the, the principal changes and how the program looks. There are a series of about 12 demo videos available on our YouTube channel that show you different aspects of, of the program. And when you open the, um, the, the program, for the first time or until you switch it off, there'll be a, a, an introductory video to the graphical input, which is the area of probably most input change for, for users. So there are all, all ways you can um, familiarise yourself with the, with the programme, as well as obviously attending these sort of webinars. So we're intending this one to be the first in a series where we'll go through some more detailed um, examples in Slope. So I'll hand over to Mark now, who will uh, introduce that process and show you um, a run through building some models. Thanks, Mark. Awesome. Thanks, Carol. Hi, everyone. Uh, Mark Skinner here. I'm the uh, product manager for the Geotech products at Oasis. Um, we're pleased to be able to uh, present today on the latest version of Slope, uh, as Carol and Norbert have described. I did just flash on the screen there the uh, sorry, a, a quick glimpse the uh, the, the YouTube videos. Um, that's that's them um, just in a, in a, arranged in a playlist just for reference. I'm sure we can um, make sure you've got the, the link in the chat if that's uh, helpful. OK, so in terms of what we'll cover today, we're, we're going to have four sort of parts to this webinar. Um, uh, and the overall intention is, is just to take you through building a model in the new version of Slope, because as, as Carol said, been a few changes. And particularly if you're used to the old version of Slope, um, uh, you know, it can, it can be a bit, uh, bit of a shock to the system, I suppose, uh, some, some of the new features, but we hope they are for the better uh, in, in the long run. So four parts. Part one, we will build a model. Uh, I've got a simple example model. I'll, I'll do that, uh, take you through the, the various steps on, on the screen. We'll then take that model, 
and we will apply a partial factors just to show you how that's done. Um, we'll then continue and substitute in the Morganston price method, which is the new analytical method that's been added to slope. And we will finish by switching the groundwater over to a steady state seepage analysis. Again, that's a, another new feature in uh, this version of slope. OK, so if we jump straight into part one, um, I'm going to be flicking in between slope itself and, and these slides, so um, hopefully that works OK. Um, so in terms of building a model, we will cover four sort of core parts of that. Um, defining materials at the top left there, um, drawing the geometry, and that's where there has been a bit of a change. Uh, defining a phreatic water surface to start with, and then defining the analysis grids that we use uh, to do the circular slip analysis. OK, um, I'm just now going to switch into slope. If I stop that presenting. There we go. Hopefully that's come through OK. Um, I've got it's a, it's a very simple um, example model, uh, just a, a bit of a gravity retaining wall sat on a, a slight slope with some fill behind it. So. I'll proceed to to take you through how we build that. Just before I do, as a as a an, sort of better provide an explanation of the the layout of slope is there because it has changed a little bit. Um, at the top here we have a new ribbon, so all the controls have been updated into uh, more modern style, more ribbon style, consistent with other types of software. Uh, over on the left we have Data Explorer. Um, which lists all the various uh, dialogues and uh, menus that you can access. And over on the right, we have a new feature called the specification, and that's principally for controlling calculation options um, and also the slip surfaces, uh, the grids. Uh, so we'll, we'll see that used uh, as we go through the example. In the center is the graphical input area. I should add on the ribbon as well, there are, there are three tabs. Home is for more general controls, and then we've got two other tabs for graphical input and output. OK, so uh, as I say, simple, simple model to, to start building. I have pre-populated a couple of things in, in the example here, um, principally titles. So uh, I generally work down in the data explorer, the different fields. So titles just as you know, job title, project number, um, those sorts of details. So I've pre-populated those. Uh, next one down is the units. So we'll stick with the defaults for this example, uh, default SI units. Next is the specification. That simply opens the, the, the specification on the right. So we can skip that for now. And what I will show you now is the materials. So I've pre-populated four materials. However, I do need a fifth one for this model. Uh, won't add them all in by hand because that's not very exciting to watch, but um, I need a retaining wall material, so let's add that in. And as I do that, um, so we just work across enter the parameters. A quick, uh, quick tip: if you didn't know already, press equals and it copies from the cell above, um, which I use quite often. So just pop some material parameters in there, and I'm going to go for a bright, bright green for my retaining wall. Um, you can press double equals in the first. Uh, cell and it will copy the entire line as well if you want to duplicate a material. OK, so I've got uh, six materials defined there just uh, ready to go. So I'm now going to jump back into the graphical input. And I'm going to start to try to draw my shapes. Uh, my strata. So. Um, I'm going to go from the bottom up this time. I've got a layer of rock, so we just draw a polygon. I'm snapping to the to the points. And when I close that loop, slope picks up that, that an area has been generated. So what I would do is say yes, and I'm going to assign that area I've just drawn uh, rock. OK, and it will color it in to match. So just getting my notes up to date on the other screen. So uh, the next layer I'm going to draw is, is the gravelly clay. So again, I start with a line and I can 
reference my existing nodes. Um, I'm I'm snapping to the grid. You can right click uh, and directly enter a coordinate should you wish to. But um, this this is a simple example that is uh, can use the the uh, snap to grid. So uh, we'll stick with that for now. So there we go. So it's detected that layer. And I'm going to assign that to a gravelly clay material. OK. All right. Um, last soil layer. Going to have a little layer of sandy clay on top. So we'll start again. Just get that one drawn. And there we go. That's the third one. Assign that one to my sandy clay material. OK. Good practice, going to press save. Right, um, now I'm going to draw the retaining wall. Uh, it's a simple uh, block. There we go. And because I had snapped a grid on, it's snapped to the, uh, the the nearest node. I'm just going to edit that node. And so I can edit the position by selecting the node and just adjusting its coordinates slightly. Just uh, got a bit of a chamfer on the front there. OK, my last piece of material is just to fill in this gap. And that is my fill. Granular fill. There we go. OK, so. That's all my materials defined, so I've got the the basis of my uh, my model set up there. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is define a groundwater surface, so it's a phreatic surface, uh, and I do that again by coming back to the data explorer, double click, and we get a, a dialog open up. Um, I'm going to directly enter the coordinates. In the cell. Bear with me. Okay, let's come back to that one. There. In a second, I'll we'll skip to the slip circles. So we define the slip circles on the right here. And these are the this is defining a grid that I would like to use to analyze the problem. Um, by default, we're on a single point of analysis. I'm going to change that to grid. So that opens up a whole host of other options there. And let me just reference so I'm, I'm going to set the bottom left position in my grid five and I'm going to stick with 11 analysis points in each direction and I'm going to set the spacing of those to two meters initially it's good to start with quite a coarse grid because that reduces uh, analysis time and what we would generally encourage is that, is that we uh, make that grid finer to home in on uh, a more accurate answer. So there's our grid. Um, if I press save, we should now have a valid model. I haven't, I haven't entered the groundwater yet. I'll come back to that in a second. Um, and we should now be able to do some analysis. So we do that by pressing analyze the Sigma button and then press start. Um, and it shouldn't take very long because it's it's a fairly uh, simple model. OK, so we have some results and I will just jump to the graphic output to show that that's there. There we are, some slips. Um, OK, so going back to the water. Just type in. What I failed to do earlier was change this to hydrostatic, which then enables the box below. 
so I'll now do that process. Um, we enter in the coordinates 24. Okay, and when we press OK, that should appear. Oh, we'll delete the results, that's fine. And you'll see in the graphical input, uh, the graphical view, we have a dashed line showing that uh, water profile. Oh, whoops, I've, I've set all my soil uh, layers to minus 60 instead of 50 as per my example, so I'll just adjust that uh, to make sure they match up. There we go. OK, so there we've got we've got a groundwater profile uh, defined in the model. So the analysis I just did didn't consider groundwater. If I just press analyze again now, I'll get the same results because what I haven't done is actually told slope that that groundwater profile is assigned to any of the materials. So the way I do that is. I go to select layer. I hit the layer. And then open layer properties and there's a there's a box here which lets me. Assign the groundwater, so I'll just do that. For each of the layers. Turn. And lastly, groundwater. OK, so that's that's now assigned. And when I hit analyze again, we should see that we get a. Slightly different result. Again, it's just just an example, but. Uh, it gives a flavor, so back to graphical output that's dropped. It was over factor safety was in the mid twos before, so a bit of a bit of a change there. OK, so what I'm going to do now, we can see we've got quite a quite a coarse grid there and and we are. Kind of over to all the left hand side of the grid. Um, we do have the option. Uh, in the specification to allow slope to extend the grid to, to find a minimum. Um, slip which I haven't got selected at the moment, so it's only analyzed what I've specified in terms of that grid, which of course means you may not find the actual lowest factor of safety. So if I now delete those results. And jump back to my slips, I'm going to. Firstly, allow it to extend the grid. And I'm also going to tighten up the spacing. Uh, so we'll just use just as an example, a one meter. Uh, grid. I'm going to double the size of it, so we've just got more more points. So. Reanalyzing. You should see it. It takes a little longer. And it's just warning me there because it's. Extending the grid with an incremental radius, which bumps up the uh, the calculation time a bit. And again, we should see a slightly different result because it's uh, it's extending the grid in the first place, but also it's it's uh, using a finer grid. You can immediately see it's taking a bit longer um, because I've uh, doubled the number of points in both dimensions. OK, that's finished. Graphical output, there we go. So we've got far more results, but because the minimum is not on the edge of the, the grid, I'd be a bit happier with that. Uh, bit more confident that that is that is the minimum uh, in terms of the problem. OK, so um, that that's part one, really building a, a straightforward model just with a with a phreatic uh, groundwater surface. What I'm going to do now is. Move on to part two, which uh, arguably will, will be much quicker because. It's a fairly straightforward thing. I'm just going to jump back into the just delete that for now. Jump back into the slideshow to introduce that section. So bear with me. OK, so part two is applying partial factors. And essentially there are three options for if you count SLS. Um, so we can have a factor of safety on shear strength, which is essentially the overturning forces versus the restoring. 
You can have factory safety on loads where the applied loads are factored up. And you can use partial factors. And, and in slope, we have um, SLS, we have Eurocode 7, design bridge 1, and we have BS 8006, 1 and 2, those options. Just showing on the bottom right there is how we do that in the specification. And I will show you that uh, again in a second. So jump back into slope. Uh, back to our graphical input. Back into the specification. So if we would like to apply some factors, just, just as an example, let's choose partial factor analysis. We then get another box to select the code. And for now, I'm going to go for uh, Eurocode 7, DA1, 2. That's it. That's all we have to do. So that's now selected and is now ready to run again. And being design approach two, we are reducing our soil properties, soil strength. So we should obviously see a lower result. My computer's working quite hard because it's sharing screen. So uh, just bear with it while, it while it works through that. And still going. There we go. When we jump to the results graphic output, you'll see slightly lower result. OK. So yes, that was part two. So <laughs> said it was fairly, uh, fairly quick. Uh, in preparation for part three, I am just going to remove the partial factors. And then we'll jump back into the slides for a second. So SLS. Fantastic. OK. And back into the slides. So very quick one on, on applying partial factors there. And the next section, next part, is the Morganston price calculation. So we thought we'd just uh, restate here what what that is. Uh, what is what is the Morganston price method? So this is summarised from the slope user manual, but essentially it, it's similar to the Bishop method. It's using the method of slices, but you're able to vary the ratio between normal and shear in slice forces. So there's a you can set that as a constant ratio or it uses a half sign depending on what your wishes. So again, that is activated in the specification on the on the right, um, as, as you can see in the slide there. And we will just go and show you that back in the model and now. OK, so. Um, we jump into the method box here. Get Morganson price, and you'll see it reconfigures by default. We're on the, on the half sign uh, function, just because it's taking up more analysis time. I'm going to jump the uh, grid back down to a small number of analysis points, and then we can hit analyze. Oops, I've done something wrong. OK, never fear. Instead of investigating what I've done wrong, I've got a backup, which I'll jump into. Bear with me. OK, so. All three. There we go. So in this one. You see, I've already selected the Morganston price method, and let me analyze. There we go. And again, it should be should be fairly quick because I've got a small number of uh, grids.
He says, that was pretty good. OK, so just to show you that. Again, I'm just, I'm just showing you the outputs, but uh, it has run successfully and we've got a, got a reasonable result. Whilst I'm here, um, just a bit on the results, the graphical output. So we have a few options up here. Um, by default, it shows all of the, the slips. You can switch that off and just see the slip that resulted in the minimum factor of safety. It's highlighted as you might expect. It goes through the uh, heel of the wall. Um, once you've uh, once you've selected a circle, you can select others you, uh, other than the minimum. You can then show the slices that make up that force. And should you wish, you can then select a slice diagram and select one of those slices, and so it will show you the uh, vector diagram of the forces that that make up the calculation. Um, so there we are. A little bit of results. The um, by default we are filtering as well. We we show the the slips below factor of safety of three. But you you are able to edit that as well. Um, let's see larger ones should you wish. Okay, so um, we're going to move on to part four now, which I just jump back to the slide. Which is steady state seepage. So as with part one, this, this is probably a bit of a, a larger section. Um, there's a few steps we have to go through to apply steady state seepage to our model. So first of all, we need to set the calculation type for pore pressure, and uh, that's done in the specification. We need to draw seepage restraints. Um, we need to tell, tell slope what is defining the groundwater conditions in, in the soil. It uses uh, finite element analysis to, to do this analysis, so we need a mesh. Um, that's generated automatically by a slope, but what we can control is the coarseness of that mesh. So I'll, I'll show you how to do that. And lastly, we need to define, as well as the material parameters we've already defined, we need to define some permeabilities uh, to feed into that city state seepage calculation. OK, so uh, jumping out of PowerPoint again, back to slope. Let's delete. The results. Um, as with the the number of grids you're analysing, the mesh coarseness directly uh, affects analysis duration. So we 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 didn't we would encourage that you use a coarse grid to start with, but we'd also encourage that you, that you use a coarse mesh. And then, if you wish, you can. Uh, you increase the, the density of both to, to get a, a more accurate result. Um, just because this is a, a demo, I don't want it to run for a long time. I will drop that. Oh, so we are analyzing. OK, so. Um, first thing we do to engage steady state seepage is turn it on. So set the calculation type to calculated. So you'll see the phreatic surface has disappeared now. It's no longer relevant. Um, I'm going to draw, just for this example, some uh, fixed head conditions. So the way I'm going to do that is by selecting lines. So I'll select some lines on the left here. And I'm going to set a seepage restraint. So let's go for a fixed head of 24.8 meters that's just below the the top of the ground the ground surface there so when we apply that we get a, a blue marker to show that we've got a seepage restraint i'll then do the same for uh oops the right hand end so that one seepage restraint fixed head and we'll put that at 18. So it's a, a bit bit lower. Imagine this is a slope. Well, it is a slope. 
<laughs> the groundwater is, is falling with the slope. So lastly, what I'm going to do is set. Oops, zoom in a bit. Cancel that selection. I'm going to set a seepage restraint on the back of the wall just to simulate that we've got a drain or something there that would be, be quite likely. So again, a fixed head, and let's just keep the head slightly lower than the, the heel of the wall. OK, so that's that done. Right, so we now need to have a look at the mesh. So if I, if I turn on mesh, you'll see it's using default element sizing. There, there's quite a lot of elements there, far more than we need, and that will result in, as I said, uh, uh, a lengthy calculation time. So to address that, there's a couple of steps we need to take. First of all, select a layer and whoops, just deselected it again. There we go, layer properties. And we have a control at the bottom here, which is the mesh size in that layer. Now I'm going to set them all to a fairly large size, 10 meters. Set the layer above. That one's even smaller. So Carol might be able to comment on how they get their initial values. Must uh, I just change them all? Um, yeah, I think the defaults are set up based on line length. So if you have um, quite a short line in within an area, then that will um, produce small elements on that short line and then they only sort of grow at a certain rate. So it's um, something that you do have to watch out for. So that's this it's, drawing is a sort of indicative layout of the final mesh just to give you a guide. It's a nice, nicely shaped mesh, but uh, we don't need that many elements for now. Uh, what I'm also going to do then is is select all of the nodes, and I'm going to. Can you see we've got this control to control the length of the neighbouring elements? So I'm going to I'm going to boost that up to something fairly large, say six metres for now. And what it's then doing is 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 redrawing that mesh. You see, it's very coarse, but that is perfectly adequate for now. Um, so we've we've got a nice mesh there. Okay. So we've drawn our constraints, we've set the calculation to steady state. We've adjusted the mesh coarseness. Um, the last thing we need to do is the permeabilities of the materials. So we do that by jumping back into materials in the data explorer. And you'll see that there's a second tab down here at the bottom now. That's only activated when we set the calculation type for pore pressures to calculated. They are given default values of, of 1 to minus 5, um, but I'm going to change them because they're not, they're, well, they're default values. Um, so let's go for just some indicative. 26 and we'll, oops, OK. That's fine. Yep, yep. And I'm going to set the wall. If I need to do this, I was trying a few options. Set that to quite high permeability, I think. Okay. Right, so that is now ready uh, to run an analysis. And in Blue Peter style, I'm going to open the model where it's already run because it does take a few minutes to analyze and we don't want to sit watching that uh, for a few minutes. So let's close that one. We open slow. And I'll just show you the, the analyzed version just to show it's working. I have saved as model four. Here we go. So exact same model. Got our, got our constraints in there. And if I go to output, 
So you'll see we have slip circles showing, as you'd expect. Start with piezometric head. So you can see on the right, we've got 18 as, as we defined. Um, I've chosen material colors that obscure that text, but we've got the 24.5 on the left as we entered. Let's put some colors on. Okay, so then jumping back to pore pressure, you can see we've got a nice, nice slope uh, in, in the gradient there. And I will turn off the slips just to show you um, that the drain is working at the back of the wall as well. It's drawing the water down underneath, um, which happens to be the point where our minimum slip circle is as well. OK, so. That's the end of uh, the steady state seepage uh, example. Uh, that was useful. So jumping back in to the slides. Whoops. Well, that's that's pretty much the uh, the end of the webinar. So um, we have a, an advert here for our next webinar. As Carol said, we're doing a, a series of these. Um, the next one will be on the 17th of November, and, and we're going to focus on uh, applying reinforcements, so drawing and, and applying reinforcements in slope. So it can do grout anchors, saw nails, rock bolts, geotextiles, as listed there. So we'll give you a bit of a, a demo on how, how that works. And we'll also have a look at how you can automate with slope. So we have the VBA and Python com interface functionality. Uh, and as Carol mentioned, one of the changes with this new version of slope is that you can save your model as a JSON as well. Um, so we will explain that in, in that webinar as well uh, and, and what that brings. OK, so. Um, just over to Norbert, I believe. To see if we have any questions. Sure. Well, I see Carol has been answering some of the questions. Huh. Um, so if if you, the two of you would like to have a look at the questions. Carol, are there any yeah. questions which weren't answered? Yes, yes, certainly. Um, so we had a question about whether the program had the ability to find the critical slip surface without the user inputting a grid. Now, so that that's a sort of that's more like a kind of strength reduction process that you would use in a finite element program. Um, that's not what slope is doing here. It's a traditional sort of method of slices um, analysis where you have to basically tell the program where you want it to look, if you like. So you specify the, the slip circle grid um, or indeed we, we haven't covered yet non-circular slips which are available in slope as well. Um, so it, it is very much that, that you define the input, but the features are there as Mark showed to extend the grid um, until a, a minimum is found. So that gives you a certain amount of flexibility in that. Um, we had a question about specifying your own partial factor scheme. Um, at the moment, there are some inbuilt sets of partial factors we do aim to allow editing of, of you know, addition of um, user defined partial factor sets in future. That was in slope 19.1. So it is something that we want to bring into 21 as well. So that will be issued in a, a future update. And question from <clears throat> Rob about plotting the line of thrust for the Morgan Stern price method. Um, that isn't explicitly in the programme just now. It would be, I think, useful to add it, yes. So we'll note that as a, a feature request. The, the line of thrust is relative, you know, it's controlled by that function, either the constant ratio between the horizontal and, and vertical interslice forces or the variable ratio, so with the half sine function. So it, it follows that sort of uh, model. Um, and <clears throat> yes, another question I can see 
a path search for non-circular analysis. Um, we do have a feature waiting in the wings, if you like, which is non-circular slip optimization. So that's due out in the next quarter. Um, but we've, we, you know, we have developed that and we've done all the testing on it. So that's forthcoming as well. Oh, and lastly, sorry, I've missed one. Um, can we filter the search area or provide slope limits? So that's, um, there are different ways of specifying the slip surfaces. So you can have, rather than a radius search, you can have all the circles going through a common point, um, or you can have them tangential to a particular stratum. Say if you've got a very hard rock layer, um, you can set all the, the circles to be tangential to that. And there are also some options for um, uh, calculating the factor of safety by scaling the loads rather than on the material strength. So there are a few different options which are described in the, the help file and manual. There's another question in the chat, Mark, that you might want to pick up um, about the, the deep foundation loading. Oh, yes. Is it possible to analyze such a case when we have deep foundation? Uh, well, I guess. Uh, I guess it is because. And, and that's the key benefit with being able to draw polygons rather than layers, as you could with previous versions of slope. Um, so, so essentially, if you can define it using a polygon, I expect you can analyze it. <laughs> I think that's a suitably uh, uh, encompassing answer. Um, I have to come up with some examples like that, I think. Yeah, I think that the main thing to remember there is that it's a relatively simplified analysis, so you won't get some, you know, some effects that you might with other um, uh, things that consider the the uh, friction between structures and the soil, for example. Absolutely, and and the material used to to draw the the foundation. You, you're you're approximating that to a soil material best you can. Yeah. Um, which is another uh, analysis approximation. Yeah. Very good. Have we run out of questions? Brilliant. Um, anyone, any more questions before we close for today? OK, <clears throat> so let's call it a day then. Um, thank you everyone for attending the webinar. It's great to see so many uh, participants. Uh, thank you for the brilliant questions. And as Mark mentioned, we will be um, hosting further webinars in the in, in the coming months. So we will be in touch with you regarding these ones. If you have any further questions, um, you can send all of these to oasis at arab.com and Mark or, or Carol will be able to reply to these. OK, thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs>